We're attempting to make over this kitchen in just two weeks, and we'll be doing all the work ourselves while sticking to a tight budget. If you've been following this series, then you know that we're trying to make over the main living spaces of this house in just 30 days, as the homeowners have their first baby due very soon. And so far, we've been able to stay on track, as we took two weeks to completely make over their laundry room. What? It looks so good. Wait, this looks amazing. And then with lots of careful planning, we were able to totally transform their living room in one day. <gasps> what? But now it's time for the biggest project in the entire house, the kitchen. And we only have two weeks to do it. So join us for the ride as we attempt to complete this massive project in 14 days and race to beat the baby to the finish line. If we're going to give this kitchen a speedy DIY makeover, then we have a lot to get done this week, including building a custom wood table from scratch and painting lots of cabinets. So we'd better get started. Ready for action? Yeah, man. Dang, I'm ready for some fall weather. It still feels like summer. All right, it's a new day, a new week, a new project, which means another trip to Lowe's. So we're headed to Lowe's. So today we're gonna to be working on building a custom dining table. So we're gonna be buying materials for that and then hopefully building all of it today. Next we gotta go for the legs. What about the legs? You don't need the legs. When finalizing a design, Andrea often has me hold things in place so she can step back and take a look, but she's rarely quick about it. Can you make a decision quickly? <laughs> My arms are burning. How high is the table supposed to be? This looks high for a table. Hey, do your calculations later. So I just realized that these are more like kitchen island legs, so they're too tall. <laughs> I was holding it up and going, that looks too tall for a kitchen table, so we're gonna go back and get shorter legs. Thankfully, we found legs that were the right height, but we ran into another little problem. There's only three of these no. legs. So what's the solution? Uh, well, we have another Lowe's in town. I'm gonna see, check online and see if they have these. While she's looking online, I'm gonna go ask somebody and see if they have a fourth leg. I mean, they have three legs. Come on, man. Four of these by chance, there's three. We need four. So this we have five. All right. But good news for us, our boy was able to come through. Awesome, thank you so much. Yeah, no Appreciate problem. that. Yeah. Hang on, a song just came on that I really love. Oh, Andrea's gone, she can't handle it. With her wink on it, baby. There it is, yes. Next, we need to head back over to Grant and Allie's house because I realized I left my saw over there last time. We ran out of time and we were going straight from there to pick up our kids and so the saw stayed and it's still there. You wanna go get the saw for me? Sure, darling. Oh, thanks, babe. Once we had the saw all loaded up, we were ready to head back to our house and get to work. Andrea just needed to finalize her plans first. So I kind of want to take this tabletop inside because I'm trying to get a better visual on what the right size is. Do we keep it the full six feet or cut it down to five feet? So I guess I should explain why we're building a custom table as opposed to buying one and then also why we're going with these dimensions and you've gotten a glimpse of their house already but there is not a good place anywhere in their house for a full-sized dining table and we played with so many ideas with different sized living room furniture to try and fit a table in between the island and the living room and it was just not possible. It was too crowded, didn't look right. We've decided that a table just up against the wall that they can use for every day 
that is narrow enough so it's only two feet deep this way so it's not blocking the walkway and they have the option of more seating without having to give up just a really functional space in the everyday. And so what I normally do when you can't buy the specific thing that you need that has the right dimensions is build it. And thankfully a kitchen table is one of, I think one of the easiest things to build. It's like a great beginner project. And so if you're following along and you're like, hey, I wanna build a table, just get whatever size table top you want and then it's the exact same process for the rest of it. After Andrea finalized her plans, we were ready to head outside and set up shop. We've got our workspace all set up. I've got all my materials. We are ready to start building. So first I need to figure out some measurements so we can make a few cuts. But like I said, really this is a, an incredibly simple build. So obviously I'm gonna have a leg in each corner and then I've got these one by threes that are gonna stretch in between. So I need to figure out how long I want this to be. So then at first I need to figure out how much of a gap I want between my leg and the edge of the table so that I can figure out this length. So I decided that I want my legs to have just a half inch gap between the edge of the leg and the edge of the table and then this part will go a little bit further in but then to find the length for this I subtracted 2.75 which is my width of my leg here times 2 minus another inch because that's half inch on each end 65.5 inches because my table is 6 feet long or 72 inches. Once I figured out the correct length for all of my 1x3 boards, I used my miter saw to make all of my cuts. So that is actually all of the cuts I need to make on the miter saw for this entire project, which is awesome. Next, I need to make pocket holes at the ends of all of these boards because that's how I'm gonna attach it to the legs. And then I'm also gonna do pocket holes along one of the long sides because that is how I'll attach it to the underside of the table. And as much as Andrea was confident that this was a really simple build, it was starting to feel a lot more complicated to me. But if anyone's up for the job, it's definitely Andrea. I don't know if I can stay. I need to stand this one up. I don't think I'm going to have to move the tip. It's this! Once I finished making all of my pocket holes, I was ready to attach my 1x3s to the table legs using one and a quarter inch screws. Before screwing the 1x3s in place, I applied a little bit of wood glue. Once I finished the first one, I repeated the same process for the other side. If you follow this channel for any amount of time, you know that Andrea has a real knack for building custom furniture. And though the process is often tedious and time consuming, I love seeing Andrea in her element. Because in my mind, this girl's a true artisan. Water break! I don't know why we're so thirsty. It's only 98 degrees out. Mm -hmm. After taking a quick break to cool off, I was ready to finish attaching all of the table legs to the 1x3s. All right, this part is all assembled. Now I just need to get it centered on the tabletop so I can attach it to the tabletop. <laughs> all right, that's it. Table's assembled. Boom, baby. Uh, now we just need to turn this thing over, probably on the ground. Ooh. Oh, it's so cute. Look at it. We got a table, folks. 
All right, the table is all assembled. Next up is sanding. I used my random orbital sander to give the entire table a light sanding just to knock down any rough spots and get it ready for stain. Once I finished all of the sanding, I went ahead and put my miter saw up to get ready to stain. That is like a legitimate table. Next, I blew the table off with our leaf blower and then grabbed a drop cloth out of the garage so I didn't get stain on our driveway. All right, we are all set up and ready for stain. And I'm gonna use the same General Finishes gel stain in the color Antique Walnut. It's the one that I used for the butcher block in the laundry room, so it'll tie in nicely, and I already know I like this color, so. You're getting smart wearing gloves now. We're getting family pictures tomorrow. I can't have brown fingernails. Oh, that's tomorrow. This is one of the only gel stains that I've used that I actually like and I particularly like using it on a project like this where I have multiple different kinds of wood because it really helps to even them out and make them all look very similar if not exactly the same. top of the table went pretty fast but all of the other little details and table legs took a little bit longer. After a little more time than I anticipated, I was finished staining this table and it was looking so good. Now we gotta let this dry for a really long time and then we'll do top coat. It looks like a little antique table. I like it. I like you. feels like fall so today we're starting the paint prep process that's hard to say the paint prep process the ppp today we're starting the paint pet <laughs> i don't know if i can do it we might need to think of something <laughs> else to say so the first thing we need to do is figure out what kind of paint is on the cabinets currently because that will determine what kind of prep and primer we use to refinish these cabinets so we are headed to their house right now to check Looks pretty cozy in here, kitty. So all you need to be able to figure out if you have latex or oil-based paint on your current cabinets is rubbing alcohol. And we have these little alcohol swabs. You just put some on a cotton ball, you rub it on, and if your paint comes off at all or starts to get gummy, then it's latex. And if it doesn't budge, then it's oil-based. So there is definitely paint on this, which means these are latex and that's going to affect how we refinish them. It's a little bit easier than if they're oil-based. It's more difficult to repaint over oil-based. So, onto the paint store. While they're mixing the paint, we decided to run home, change into paint clothes, and now we are heading to Lowe's to get a few things that we need for painting. The parking lot is wet. Huh? This is so close to our house. Did it seriously rain? Oh, it's what? Miranda! I know you! <laughs> So we got all the paint supplies we need. The paint store called, said the paint is ready, so we are gonna go back and pick that up. All 
right, so we are ready to start painting this kitchen. We had to pivot our plans a little bit because there, for the first time in like three months, four months, we have a significant chance of rain for today and tomorrow. We decided we were gonna focus on painting the inside first. So on the agenda for today is first to take up all the doors and the hardware and the drawer fronts and get all of those set aside because we're gonna spray those at our house. Then we're gonna do a light sanding on everything just to scuff up the surface, clean it really good with the degreaser, mask everything off, start priming, and hopefully get to the first coat of paint. So are we gonna finish this before the baby comes? I started by removing all of the upper cabinet doors first and then moved on to the lowers. This step was obviously necessary, but it was gonna take a little while. If you've ever painted cabinets before, you know it's basically like running a marathon. And taking off these cabinet doors is like mile one of a very long journey. All the baby stuff. The job was finally finished, but there was a slight hang up. So I've run into a little bit of a dilemma. All of the drawer fronts are glued on. It's fine, I mean, it's not gonna cause like a structural problem, obviously, but I wanted to pull them off and spray them with all the doors, but I can't do that now. And that's also gonna make filling those holes a bigger deal. So now I wanna figure out what hardware we're using for sure on all of our drawers to figure out if I need to fill the holes or not. <laughs> Do you think Allie should get an award for most organized cabinets of all time? <laughs> yes. I mean, her drawers are what are really impressive. I'm like, I wanna buy some of these organizers. <laughs> I'm inspired. All right, next I'm gonna use these 80 grit sanding pads to give everything a light scuff sand. There's a couple of spots where I see drips from the previous paint job, so I'll sand those down too, but this just kind of roughens up the surface, obviously smooths out drips and stuff, but it'll allow the primer and the paint to adhere even better. So it's a step you don't want to skip. taking quite a while and so I enlisted Dean's help to get the job done. All right, next I'm gonna give everything a really good cleaning and I like Cred Cutter, just different TSP substitutes. TSP is great except you have to get it off completely so it's a little risky because it can ruin your finish if you don't get it clean. But this, any kind of good degreaser to get any oil, grease, food, hand stains, anything off of your cabinets, especially in a kitchen, they're gonna be dirty even if you're a really clean person <laughs> so you have to clean it good <laughs> i'm walking the end this to you oh what <laughs> i need help we got a lot to do once again this was taking forever and so i asked dean if he would put down the camera and come help me Well, you know the old saying, it'll look worse before it looks better. Never more true than when painting. All right, we got everything sanded and wiped. The uppers are already dry, but it's still kind of damp on the bottom. So I'm gonna start off by masking off the upper areas, really just like against the wall where I don't want to have to cut in over and over. Then we'll see if it's dry enough to do the bottom or we might just start painting the top. dry so I'm gonna go ahead and tape off that as well and along like the floor and everything. And though painting cabinets is a highly laborious process, Andrew has never been one to cut corners and that's why her finishes always come out looking so professional.
All right, we're done with all the masking off, so we are ready to prime. So I'm using Benjamin Moore Sticks Primer. It's just a good bonding primer, and I'll be using a combination of a foam roller as well as a brush to get into some of the harder to reach places. And we did do the test, if you remember, and these are latex cabinets, and so some people will say you don't need to prime, but you should always prime. You should always prime cabinets. This process might look fast on camera, but don't be fooled, priming takes a long time. So I went ahead and put the camera on a stand to jump in and help. Gosh, it just looks so good, doesn't it? Wow. And just about the time you think you're done, no, you're just done with the uppers. Now it's time to prime the lowers. cabinets definitely took a good bit of time but like I said earlier if you're going to be doing all the work of refinishing your cabinets you want your finish to last and so it is 100% worth it to prime them all right first coat of primer is done and it took me so long that I can already start on the first coat of paint for the upper cabinets because this primer dries really fast which is another reason I like it so I can go ahead and put my top coat on now and I will say I'm using Benjamin Moore advanced paint which I have used in the past and I absolutely love it because I think out of any paint that I have used it gives the most perfect smooth finish but part of the reason it does that is because the dry time is so long which means it's longer for it to just level and get just glassy smooth but that also means you have to wait pretty much a full day it's like 16 hours in between coats which is really annoying but we want to get this first coat on of today so that we can come back and get coat number two on tomorrow. We went through a lot of samples trying to find the perfect color for these cabinets and we ended up going with the same color that we used in the laundry room which is Benjamin Moore's Revere Pewter. In this light it looks like the perfect light taupe color and just breaks up all of the white in the space but like I always say it is worth testing colors in your own space because this one depending on the light can look more gray or more taupe so make sure and get samples to test it out in your own space. And I know on camera this color is not looking like it's any different than the original color, but I promise it is going from a true white on the cabinets to a really beautiful light taupe color. And it looks so good and I'm excited to get all of the doors painted and see it all put together. painting cabinets there is really no way around it it is just a ton of work and each one of these coats took me almost three hours but having painted several kitchens in the past I have learned that the work is well worth it and the payout in the end is incredible First coat finished. We gotta let this dry overnight. We'll come back tomorrow for coat number two and I'm like hoping that two coats will be enough. All right, it's the next day. Everything is dried and we're ready to start on coat number two for all of the cabinet boxes. And if you've ever painted cabinets before, then you may recognize this as the point in the process in which your arms are burning, your back is aching, your body's tired, 
but you press on anyways because you know the end result will be worth it. If you've ever painted cabinets before, you might also know that after finishing the second coat on the cabinet boxes and being nearly a week into the painting process, that you're only about halfway finished. Well, amazing job on the project this week. We have a long way to go, but we covered a ton of ground this week and you did some really incredible stuff. The first of which is you making this custom table from scratch. Yeah, I really like building tables because they are relatively simple, but they don't necessarily look simple. And so it's a fun project to start with. And I love how this one is turning out. It really does look like something we went and found at a cool antique fair or something. And I think it's the butcher block that gave it that look because it's so thick on top and then the legs are pretty awesome too. And we just picked those up at Lowe's. Like I'm really excited to get this finished and to actually see it in their space. And then you started into the massive job of painting all the cabinet bases, which took forever. It took a really long time. I'm actually just now recovering from that. I had to go to the chiropractor, like I could barely walk for a few days. I'm getting old. So we accomplished a ton this week, but there is still a ton more to do next week. Andrea is gonna be finishing off the table by adding a top coat. We'll be painting the cabinet doors, which is an absolutely massive undertaking. And then of course, we're gonna bring everything into the space and finish off this kitchen for the reveal, but we are gonna be really crunched for time. <laughs> so I'm already tired thinking about next week, but we will see you there and it's gonna be very exciting, that's for sure. Oh, beep. Oh, beep. shucks, beep. Oh, beep. Beep. That really melted my little heart. <laughs> Stop talking like that. Anybody else live in Texas and you had that big freeze and now all your palm trees just look like telephone poles? Okay, I'm gonna start it. Ready? The first of which was this... <laughs> I don't remember what I was Maybe going I should just to talk. say. You gonna resist. The first of which was making this... I just make you speechless. You look at me and you can't talk. <laughs> ...by adding a top coat. That's all I could get in my head. <laughs> wow, well, am I you so horrible this? at this? Wait, what did we say last week? You're like, don't talk so bad. Stuck and what? the negative self-talk. Well, I mean, this week I'm like, you stink. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I love you. Oh, babe, now you broke my little heart. Oh. oh, got her squatting again. Can you stop? <laughs> I would just like to know how long you've been squatting. Since birth. <laughs> scratch, scratch. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Whoa, that was dangerous. I kind of leaned in. Okay. Come on. Oh, <laughs> why is that? <laughs> why are you saying come on? I thought, I thought you were going to look that way. <laughs> Woo and tell me I could have been done with this just so long me. ago. Just, My you... videographer is so slow. Um, I think that's it for this one, right? We good? 